is electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy related video and this month, the end of January 2024, it's a really good one. There's lots of data here that's worth sharing, some highs, some lows, some changes in what I'm doing as well, but it's the observations, the understanding of my data and my usage that really, really brings it all together to make me appreciate, is my system sized correctly, the right sort of battery, the right sort of solar, the right tariff, how is it working for me? And it's the change, the change in the data that's visible that really, really brings it all home, brings it all together. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope it makes sense. And I hope you find some value in this explanation of what I'm seeing. So it helps you with understanding your own system as well and configuring it. If you haven't started the journey yet, you need to go electric, electric for everything, because it really, really pays. Unbelievably, I think 2024 could be the first year that I have a net zero energy bill. Yep, so for car charging, heating my hot water, heating my house, running the house, everything, I won't be paying a penny for it. Potentially, I might be in credit through all the export that I'm doing and the saving sessions and those sort of things. So it's going to be a really interesting year. And this is the first month of 2024. So here we go. Here's the stats for the end of January. Let's start with consumption because that was a big issue for me in December where we had a megawatt hour of energy consumed, the first time ever that we've been as high as that. This month, January, 810 kilowatt hours, down at least 200 kilowatt hours in energy consumption. But it's sort of easy to explain because we've charged our electric cars a lot less. In December, our Zappi used 340 kilowatt hours. This month, only 121 kilowatt hours. So again, that 200 kilowatt hours extra consumption last month clearly was charging the electric car. But there's a little bit more to this than meets the eye. When you look at grid import, we imported this month 608 kilowatt hours. That's our second highest ever. Last month, it was 846, and the January previously was just 525. So we're up on the amount we're importing from the grid. But also, I know that our energy consumption should be down somewhat. Last January, Charlotte was living at home. This January, she's living in her own apartment away from home. So we've saved heating her room. We only heat the rooms that we're actually using. So that's about 50 kilowatt hours. So it does seem as though we're importing more from the grid, even though I would expect it to be a little bit lower. So what I'm going to do now is dig into the data and find out why, what's been going on. So using Home Assistant, let's have a look at the individual devices and see how much energy we used for each device and compare that to last year. Top of the list is the Toshiba Air-to-Air -to -air, Air Conditioning System, our heating system that consumed 242 kilowatt hours. Last January, only 168 kilowatt hours. The Zappi, 121 kilowatt hours. The Eddy heating our hot water, just 60 kilowatt hours. Kitchen sockets, 55 kilowatt hours. The cloakroom, 37 kilowatt hours. And that's noticeable. It's twice as much as it was in January last year. And the same for the ensuite, 28 kilowatt hours this January. Last year, it was half that. Cloakroom, infrared heater. That this year is adding to our heating of the cloakroom. Last January, we didn't have that heating device. So heating wise, you can see there's quite a large increase there. The TV, 20 kilowatt hours is a few kilowatt hours more than normal. We were actually unwell for a few weeks in January, so we spent more time in, hence more heating, more television usage. Oven and hob is quite similar. Mixergy heating, though, that's new because we now do a cleanse using the Mixergy device itself rather than the Eddy. So uh, Eddy Solar, don't worry about that, that's included in the last figure. And the Internet Hub, that's the same as normal, just 9 kilowatt hours. So despite Charlotte moving out and us saving 50 kilowatt hours on not heating her room for the month of January, we've still incurred 100 kilowatt hours more generally in heating. We've changed our usage. We've heated our bathroom and cloakrooms more. We've turned the heating on earlier and had it on for longer as well. What I've come to realize was last year, the timing as to when we turned the heating on and how long we left it on for isn't as much as we're doing now. We used to have the heating on first thing in the morning, a little bit, so it was warm when we first got up and had a cup of tea, but then we'd go out and walk cracker. And when we came back, then we'd turn the heating up more. 
Now, four o'clock in the morning, we're heating the house up and we're keeping it warm and keeping it on, even while we're out walking cracker. Then when we come back, it's nice and warm already. So we're using our heating system a lot more. And that's evident in these higher numbers. Moving on to solar generation, it's been a good January, 300 kilowatt hours, a nice round number. It's actually twice what we generated in December. So January, as always, has proved to be much brighter. There are 11 days, according to this chart, where we had under 5 kilowatt hours, so quite a few dull days. A third of the month was dull, but we had four days where it was over 20 kilowatt hours, which is really nice, and quite a few over 10 and sort of 15 kilowatt hours. So it's been a bright January. Comparison wise to other Januaries is actually the second best January we've had. Only 2022 was better. So the breakdown was 162 kilowatt hours for our 3.9 kilowatt array, 93 kilowatt hours for the 2.4 kilowatt array, and 45 kilowatt hours for the third array, which is the east facing gable and the three panels over our garage roof. Just for completeness, here's the day-by-day -day breakdown of those three arrays. The 3.9 kilowatt array on a 3.6 kilowatt inverter, 162 kilowatt hours. The solar edge array, that's 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels and a 2 kilowatt inverter. That was 93 kilowatt hours generated. And the Solus 2.5 kilowatt inverter, that's the three garage panels, 1.1 kilowatts of panels. And the east facing gable panels, there's four 455 watt panels on there. Uh, that generated 45 kilowatt hours. But this is where the data really starts to get interesting. Last January, we exported only 16 kilowatt hours because I was trying to consume as much as possible. This January, we exported more than half of what we generated, 151.67 kilowatt hours. Things have really changed. Now I've got an export MPAN and I'm being paid to export 15 pence a kilowatt hour. So in money terms, rather than kilowatt hours, that's £23.89 off my electricity bill for exporting all that energy. But let's do the calculation. Am I really better off than I was when I had deemed export on the fit array? So this is the array that we still get fit payments for. So yes, even though I've moved off deemed export and onto a smart export guarantee, I still get paid for what we generate on this fit tariff. The 162 kilowatt hours, I used to get half of that as deemed export at 7 pence a kilowatt hour. So half of 162, that's 81 times 7 pence. That's £5.67 for deemed export I would have got that I'm now missing out on, but I am being paid £23.89 for the export tariff that I'm now on with Octopus Energy. So I'm better off. Or am I? Because some of that 151 kilowatt hours that I'm exporting, I'm now using energy importing from the grid instead. I'm charging the car. I'm heating the hot water. I'm putting the washing machine on. I'm doing as many things as I can using grid power at 7.5 pence and then I can export my solar energy at 15 pence so some of that extra saving that I'm getting in the 23 pounds 89 I'm losing half of that with the 7.5 pence I'm having to pay to import more energy hence my import from the grid is higher this month I guess where the real gain is, is where previously I was turning things on for the sake of it, heating my hot water hotter than I needed and a higher percentage in the water tank than I actually needed. Turning more heaters on, leaving them on for longer while it was sunny days, going out and leaving the heating on. I'm not doing those things as much now, so I probably am making some savings. How much? Do you know, I, I can't quite calculate it, but my grid import is higher. I don't know about you, but I find this stuff fascinating that I've moved to an export tariff and I'm now exporting as much as I can versus consuming as much as I can. That's what I used to do. And it is working out that I'm financially better off. In a month like January, where I'm only exporting 151 kilowatt hours, it's not as big an amount as I thought. But so far, it is definitely more money. The thing that's really pleasing me is how easy I've switched from consumption to exporting. It actually feels more natural. I'm making less effort to turn things on, just letting the energy go out to the grid and know that I'm being paid well for it. Using the energy at 7.5 pence to charge the car, heat the hot water, do things more by default from the grid. So it's an unusual situation, embracing grid import and not worrying about export. 
but I've actually adapted to it easier. I do actually think it's a more natural way of doing things and I'm more relaxed. I was more concerned about consuming it and it took more, shall we say, mental effort during the day to turn things on. Now it is a lot easier. So both the Octopus Intelligent tariff and moving to export, both of those things, which I worried about, have actually worked out really, really well. The icing on the cake, though, is the fact that I can now participate in the saving sessions. Now that I'm allowed to export and my export is counted with my export tariff, when I have a saving session, which my usage in the house during those hours is normally zero, now I can export and I've got a minus value on kilowatt hours, so I am actually making a saving. I can export 4.25 kilowatt hours in an hour, and that's been worth about £9.25, £9.50 per saving sessions for an hour. So my Octa points this month, 8428 worth £10.53. So my bills, which only go up to the 27th of January, are looking pretty good. Ignoring the referral reward, which was £50 that came in. So thank you very much for using my referral code. But my electricity bill, £55.78, less £21.72 that I got for export payments. That's only £34 uh, left. There's some charging on Electroverse, £8.78. But I had another £10.53 redeemed from the octopoints and that export saving session so that's a whole 32 pounds off my bill i only paid 23 pounds including the standing charge for january a month with all my heating my electric car use everything these numbers are just so small it feels incredible and that's why if i can have a bill as low as 23 pounds in january i think there really is a potential here that i could have a net zero value bill for the year in 2024 Moving on then to our home storage battery. We've actually used the battery more than any other month so far. So 244 kilowatt hours used out of the battery this month. But the state of charge of the battery hasn't dropped below 34%. This is another piece of data that's quite hard to explain in that I can't actually show all the graphs and the data that make sense of it all, but we're using more battery. And I think that links to we're using more heating because we're using more heating after the sun goes down in the afternoon and we're using more heating early in the morning after 5.30 in the morning. Intelligent Go, the cheap period, ends at 5.30 in the morning. My Go Faster tariff that I had previously used to end at 6.30. So I've got another hour in the early hours to cover with heating on and all those sort of things. I think that's why we're using more energy from the battery. This graph from Home Assistant showing the battery state of charge is actually a little bit easier to read. Uh, you can see we're going to the top 100%, charging to 100% every day. That's overnight. And then it's dropping down. The lowest there is 34%. So it's actually not many days where we're dropping very low at all. Partly that battery state of charge is being reinflated because sometimes we get extra slots from Intelligent Go to charge the car during the day, say between six, seven, eight, nine o'clock in the morning. Sometimes we are charging at those times, and that gives me an opportunity to recharge the battery to 100% later on. So actually, the state of charge is being masked, I suppose, because I've got two opportunities to charge the car. Firstly, overnight on the cheap rate energy, and then when we get extra slots, I can recharge it again. But that's not happening every day. And now with spring and summer ahead of us, it's only going to get better. We're going to generate more and we're going to use the battery less. So December is the dullest month of the year. That's when the battery is stressed the most. So things are only going to get better now as we move into spring and summer. During January, I was seeing 5.5, 5.6 kilowatts as the highest peak of solar generation from our array. I think we've got 9.3 kilowatts of solar panels, but 5.6 kilowatts is the peak during January. In February, I've already seen 6.3 on a really nice sunny day in the first day. So uh, yeah, as the sun's rising higher, the sun's getting stronger, solar generation's getting stronger, we're going to be generating a lot more for a lot longer. Moving on to hot water then. So we heat our hot water using the My Energy Eddy, and it heats into a Mixergy hot water tank, which has two sections to it. It has a hot water section. This chart is showing how hot our hot water gets. It goes up to 55 degrees when we're finished heating it. And then as obviously we use some hot water, it runs down. And the, cold, the coldest hot water temperature is about 40 degrees. 
The cold water section obviously depends on how cold the water is outside, so at some points it can be just 10 degrees. But you can see there the two spikes where it goes up to 50 degrees. Those are the moments where we've had to have a cleanse of the tank. Once every two weeks, we heat all of the hot water all the way up to 51 degrees and above, and that way it makes sure there's no Legionella in the tank. So those two cleansers are happening automatically. Looking at the percentage of the tank that's full, the percentage of the 150 litres that's got hot water in it rather than cold water, you can see when we have those cleansers, it's up to 100%, and then gradually it scales down. So we're using less each day, and basically the percentage is lowering every day. So we've got more heat loss that's occurring, but it takes a good week before we reach those lower levels where we only heat to 20-25% of the tank. It's an ingenious system, this Mixergy tank, that basically means I don't need very much hot water, but I can still have it at the right temperature. And I really am enjoying using this system. It does mean we've got hot water all of the time. I'll confess, though, it has been the only complicated part of the system of moving to exporting energy, that normally I'd be heating hot water all of the time with all of our excess solar energy, and now we're not. But in contrast, I do want hot water all the time. So I've had to implement some automations to reheat the hot water from solar sometime up to a certain point, but then stop so I'm not wasting energy and not heating too much hot water. In January, our hot water usage was 1,701 litres, which actually is pretty low. I'm not sure why it's so low, but 1,700 is almost the lowest. In February last year, we were only at 1,550 litres, but other months it's 2,200 litres, 2,100, 2,300. So um, we're a good 600 litres under what I might expect to be using for hot water. Looking at our Anglian Water app to see how much cold water we've used, because we have a smart meter that checks how much cold water we're using, Actually, January 2024 was quite a low amount as well for cold water. So water generally has been used more sparingly in January, and I honestly have no idea why that is. Okay, that's pretty much it for the month. Uh, let's finish on this chart, which is from Home Assistant. What it's showing is the yellowy-orange colour and the purple is basically our solar generation. The yellow is how much we're consuming, the consumption of solar energy. The purple is what we're exporting from the solar energy. The blue is what we're consuming from the grid. So above the zero is what we're consuming, below is what we're exporting. But that consumption in yellow of solar is quite low, isn't it? And it's consistent across those days. So what I'm seeing here is we're using a lot less solar and we're proportionally, we're using a lot more from the grid, which frees us up to export a lot more. And that's how our system is now working. It's been quite a big change. I thought it was going to be worse in my head and it's actually feeling quite more relaxed now. But it is just strange looking at these numbers and trying to make sense of them when I've seen them represented slightly differently. Seeing higher energy import from the grid was concerning, but actually if I'm making more money and it's reducing our energy bills, it's actually a good thing. As for the heating usage, well, we're more comfortable now. We've got familiar with our heating system, so I'm enjoying that too. The final chart I'll show you is our loft temperature. So that gives you a good idea of what the outside temperature has been like here in Norfolk and make more sense of those heating numbers. It went as low as minus two. I think it was minus three with some frosts outside, but the loft showed up as minus two as an absolute worst. Five degrees most of the time, 10 when it started to get warmer. I hope all these numbers have made sense. I hope my explanations and analysis has helped you understand what's going on here. It really has been an adventure going with Octopus Intelligent Go and now exporting at 15 pence a kilowatt hour. It's been a real adventure and it is starting to make sense. I do think it's the right way to go. But our systems need to be flexible so that we can switch over to consuming the solar energy if that's more efficient at some times, but then also move across to export it when it makes more financial sense that way as well. Thanks again for watching. Really hope you enjoyed this video. Keep, uh, keep watching for more videos, energy related, electric cars, electric heating, electric everything. It really is great. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.